idolizing this man. I mean, here he is, the world's greatest drummer, right here with us today. Yeah! And, uh, and sometimes, sometimes, sometimes I run into Mr. Haynes at the local market, and uh, my neighbor said, what's that like for you? And he's a baseball fan. I said, that's like running into Willie Mays if he was still playing and the Major League MVP. That's what seeing Roy Haynes is like and talking to him and getting to visit and being inspired by hearing him play of, and all the great music that he's been a part of and offered his great sound to. And uh, I'd like to, you know, we can sit here and talk, we can say, wow, he's played with all of these great people, but let's switch it around a little bit before we get started and say, let's think about all the great people that got to play with Roy Haynes. That's, I think, that's yeah, an amazing yeah, yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, please, you should give him a big welcome. Great, Roy Haynes, Roy Haynes. Merci. <laughs> oh, I thought I was in France. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, Roy Haynes was born March 13th, 1925, baby, and uh, in Boston. So, Roxbury. like Roxbury, part of Boston. And uh, can you talk talk a little bit about your early years, your time period there in Boston, and uh, people that you played with in Boston, and how you were influenced before you uh, joined Louis Russell's band, Louis Russell's band? Well, uh, growing up in this Roxbury section of Boston was very exciting for me uh, for a lot of reasons. First of all, my mother and father were from a small island in the West Indies, Barbados. And when I was about two years old, my father bought a house in the Roxbury section of Boston. So I really take off my hat to him, yeah. constantly thinking about that. The particular street that we lived on, it was a hill, you know. And during the winter, we'd be at the top of the hill with our sleds. And across the street from our house was a synagogue. And on the right-hand side of our house were some people from, uh, I think they were French Canadians. And on the left-hand side of our house, was Mrs. Kelly. So growing up in that particular neighborhood was like, oh man, it was, I got a chance to meet all different types of people from different parts of the world. And very exciting period. My younger brother, there were four of us. There was only two of us left. Michael is in Boston and we talk about that, you know, growing up there was, so exciting for us, you know. Anyhow, uh, when I turned about 19 years old, I got a special delivery from a band leader in New York. And I came to join that band. That was Louis Russell, by the way, who played with King Oliver. I didn't realize that till I got to London and to find out how important this Louis Russell really was. He had never heard me, but he heard about me. So you can imagine the way people were, you know, in the 40s, uh, if they were inspired or if they liked the way a youngster played. And I don't mean to continually brag about myself or that period, but uh, it still feels good now to be here, you know, in Connecticut. A lot of excitement. I've only been here for a couple of hours and I feel like a little kid. I'm excited as, as hell. Whether I look like it or sound like it, I'm very excited and thank you for coming out, hanging out with us. You know, uh, you know one time uh, I had a friend in Boston, a friend of a friend, that said they knew I was a drummer and met me at a, uh, at a party or something. And he said, uh, he said, I think his grandmother was Mrs. Kelly. It was ironic. Oh, come on, not really. Yeah, which is a true story. He goes, really? yeah, my, my mother grew up next to Roy Haynes in, in, uh, in, in that part of Roxbury. I was like, wow. He goes, you know who Roy Haynes is? I was like, damn right I know who Roy Haynes is. <laughs> so it was uh, something else.
I, I, think, I think I can honestly say too, and I think everybody would agree that, well, first of all, he's a, a NEA Jazz Master. He's a lifetime Grammy award winner. He just got that last year. Um, but I don't think anybody in the history of this music, we're not talking about just the drums. I think we're talking about the history of this music has played with a wide range, a myriad of people and, and, and contributed again to a sound to the, the fabric of this music more than this gentleman from Lester Young and Louis Russell to Chick Corea and, and the, the things he's doing with his great band here. And um, I think that's, a, that's an astonishing, and he always sounds fresh, you know? I, th I mean, every time I hear him, it's always a surprise. I think that's what is, 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 is amazing about him. And um, I was gonna ask you a little bit about that. When did, you have a really specific, I mean, it's such a recognizable sound. And um, I know that there's, that goes through different developments, but you, you told me one time that you, you always felt like that you had your own way of approaching it, playing. And, and, and uh, how do you feel that, that that has allowed you to be who you are? I mean, that's, I think that's a great... I told you what one time? Say that again? You said that... Um, are you sure? Huh? Yeah, you told me this. You said that, you know, <laughs> you, you just said he always had... He said, like one time I was, he was uh, doing an event, we were doing this event together, he was talking about not using the hi-hat as much and use, use it. You, you were doing modern stuff on this instrument way back. I mean, you just always had your own fresh approach. And I think that's something else that's really remarkable. Oh, yeah. That's inspiring to hear. Thank you. Well, I'm serious. I'm going to ask you a couple questions too about your first your first impressions about hearing or being involved in music. Like, um, uh, let's just throw out a couple names. What was it like? That, and how did you get to play with Lester Young? How did that come about in those experiences? I think it was somebody in the band that Lester had at that time, uh, Sadiq Hakim, who's a pianist. And I think he rec uh, recommended me to uh, Lester Young. Uh, but my first gig with Lester was in Harlem at the Savoy Ballroom. And after we finished maybe one tune, Lester Young had a way on the stage the way he would move. He just backed himself over to the drums and gave me one of the greatest compliments that I had ever received, told me if I wanted the job, it was mine. He didn't say it in those words, because he had his own language. <laughs> Lester Young was one of the most original persons that I have ever met and spoke to. And uh, his first words with me, when I played with him, he said, you sure are swinging. He called everyone else press. That's where he got the nickname from. He said, you sure have a swinging press. If you have eyes, the gig is yours. Wow. And I stayed with Lester Young for two years. I was making $100 a week. And they took out tax on top of that. But it didn't really matter. You know, $100 a week to play with Lester Young was, you know, like, making a thousand dollars a week to play with anybody now. Yeah. Wow, Lester Young. What about um, Charlie Parker? What about Charlie Parker? Your first, your first, your first time you heard? <laughs> the first time playing, the first time that introduction? Uh, well, Charlie Parker, that was, yeah, that was up a, a notch. That was, yeah. We were closer to each other musically and age-wise, even yeah. though he was about five or six years older than myself. But to, to play with Charlie Parker and having been recommended by his drummer at the time, who was one of the greatest drummers, at least in my life, Max Roach, recommended me to replace him with Charlie Parker. It was like being in heaven, even though I've never been there, but yeah. that's what it felt like. <laughs> Close to as heaven as we could get. Um, you told me one time, uh, I asked you uh, at the parking lot of the market about the famous picture of Monk playing the upright piano, Charlie Mingus, you're playing and with, with Charlie Parker, and you said, I think you said that was from an afternoon, it was an afternoon at the Open Door, is that, was that correct, you remember that? Uh, I think it was at the yeah. Open Door, yeah, in the village. In the village. Yeah, have you ever seen that really famous photograph? Another inspiring time. 
You know, when I was a kid, I was seventh grade, I had a pair of um, Roy Haynes uh, Ludwig model drumsticks. <laughs> when you were in the seventh grade? Yep. About what year would that have been? Um, let's see, 1977. Uh, let's go. <laughs> and uh, and I, that's when I just, you know, I, I got, I, I knew about him, I heard about it, I heard these records, and I got these sticks, and I was like, wow, I think I can try to get this sound together. And then I started to hear other records, and I was like, got a lot of work to do. Um, but he's been so inspiring on, on a lot of, also on a lot of different recordings. But let's, let's, let's keep with some more of these uh, great folks that, again, got to play with you. Um, Sarah Vaughn, five years with Sarah Vaughn or more, right? That was amazing. It was five years, yeah. yeah. And you were, those recordings are amazing and, and your presence on the, and, and, and hearing you play songs so great. That's what I always love to hear, Mr. Haynes, how he plays a song so wonderfully. And, uh, and I, every time I hear you, like knowing the words and the way you color the songs and everything, it's pretty amazing. But your years with Sarah, just I mean, working with someone so strong like that must have been a, a great time. Well, she was not only a great singer or vocalist, she was a great artist.